Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. Today we're going to talk about yet another combined controller. And we are again using our base controllers here. The B controller, the I controller, the D controller. We said the combination of P and I would make a pretty nice controller which is suitable for doing almost anything. The D controller is adding additional additional stability. Yeah? So why not combine all three of them? Yeah? Why not build a PID controller? And this is exactly what we are going to talk about. So we will build a PID controller. Yeah. And it's done pretty much after the same, according to the same principle, like we've done it uh, before. So, uh, make it colorful, P, proportional part, I, integrational part, and D, derivation part. Uh, so, we are talking about a PID controller. And as the PD contro PI controller was a combination of P and I, and the PD controller was a combination of P and D, we also have here three parts. Yeah? We have the P, we have the I, and we have the D. All three parts are combined at the end. Yeah? P, I, D. Uh, as the output of the D element. In the end, we are again building our correcting variable. Here is the output of the I element. Here is the output of the P element. Uh, all of those are summarized here. So we have pluses everywhere. Uh, here we have Y from S. And the input is, of course, the deviation. Here we have our XD from S. So what would be the transfer function now of a P of this uh, PID controller? Well, I think it's clear. Huh? So the transfer function of a PID controller is the transfer function of the P controller, which is actually KP, huh? plus the transfer function of the I controller, which was 1 divided by STO, huh? and plus another transfer function of the D controller, which was actually uh, the DT1 element, STD, 1 plus ST1. Huh? And also here we usually do it that way, that we are factoring out this KP. Huh? So this is actually KP multiplied by 1 plus 1 divided by STN, uh, plus STV divided by 1 plus ST1. Uh, adjustable parameters of such PRD controllers is of course the KP, uh, then there is the TN, the TV and the T1. Uh, these, these parameters I usually can adjust. So this is how a PAD controller looks like from the mathematics side. Let's have a short look or let's try to determine how it looks, the step response and so on. I've prepared here again this little something. So we're talking about So we're again talking about the P I D controller. Let's 
let's note the transfer function. Yeah? So f regulator PID, and I said it is kp multiplied by 1 plus 1 divided by stn yeah, plus stv divided by 1 plus st1. Which actually was the same as, and now I'm using again the colors, kp plus 1 divided by STO plus now derivation part STT derivation time and 1 plus ST1. Let's think how those things looked like here. So let's think about the proportional part. Let's say okay we have 0 0.5 so the proportional part would be like this. It is a step up to kp. Okay? So this is the this is the blue part. Then we have the green part, the integration part. Here we will be zero. Yeah? And here we're starting to rise. Yeah? And I will simply draw it that way. Yeah? So here we see the integration time in this in this case called TO. Okay? If we're combining those two, we would have here the PI element. Here we see TN then. Yeah? Before. Yeah? KB multiplied by TO, 0 0.5, multiplied by 10 is 5, so we would end up in this. So let's draw it. Yeah. The, the PI element would then look like this, here jump, and here parallel yeah. and here we even see this TN. Yeah. We've discussed this when we discussed the, the PI element. Yeah. So this jump here to KP and then rise. This is the first two parts. Here then, yeah, we have, first we have a jump yeah, to a certain value. Yeah. Then we would have here T1, the damping time, and after 5 T1s, which actually is 25 here, we would reach zero. This would be the value, uh, would be the value, and here we are reaching uh, TD divided by T1. Uh, this would, is the peak value here. Uh, and if I'm combining no, now, all of those, yeah, it would look like this. Here we are at zero. Yeah. Then we are jumping up to, we have a KP part and this derivation part, so a little bit higher here. Yeah. Then here we have this DD and we are not going back to zero. Yeah. After 25 we are almost there, then here we are parallel. And here we will look like that, yeah? that we are getting close, again closer and closer to this. Yeah? So this here is actually the step response. This is just, just yeah? an overlay of all those parts. Yeah? And the peak value we reach here is of course kp plus, and here we have a td divided by t1. Yeah? Or if I get out kp again, it's kp1 plus t1 
TV divided by T1. This is the peak value where we reach. So we have, at the beginning, we have a big peak from the derivation. At the beginning, it looks like a derivation element. Then this derivation part is slowly disappearing. Yeah? How slowly or how fast is depending on this T1. Yeah? And then, in the end, it looks like a PRD part. Yeah? This is how this looks like. And now I cannot make it entirely that it exactly fits here. Yeah? However, let's remember how a proportional part. This I can do, 0 to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here we have 2, 3, 4, 5. Here we have the proportional part. It's just at Kp. Yeah. And here we are, zero degree. Yeah. This was the proportional a p element. Yeah. And now the i element. I will draw it simply that way. Let's make it here. This is the i element, and here why we are exactly at 1 divided by do. Okay? This is where we pinch the 1 line. Just, uh, look at the i element if you're not sure. And then we have the, the, uh, the t1 element. There we are growing. And at some point in time, we will reach a stable variant. Here, we reach dt divided by t1. Here, the band is 1 divided by t1. And now we have fixed this. This is how it looks like. And if we combine all those parts together, yeah, ooh, there, I should also write there. Here, up to here, we are at plus 90 degree. Here we are going down. And here we are at zero. Of course, there will be transition. And the green one is always at minus 90. So this is the I part, P part, D part. Just the colors, how the colors look like. Good, and how does it look in combination? Well, at the beginning, this is by far the dominating one. The R part is the dominating one. Yeah, so we are here. Then we are getting to the place where yeah, P and I are pretty much the same. Yeah, so we will transition. Then we have the P part as dominating part, and then we will have a transition, and suddenly the D part is the dominating part. So we end up in a, trans in a transfer function looking like this. Okay? And how do we look here? Here we have zero, plus 90, however, this plus 90 this does not really kick in. Yeah? So we will start here at minus 90 degree. Yeah? Here we are around minus 45, probably. Yeah? Then we are getting close to 1. Then here, starting here, we are somewhere positive area. Yeah? So it will look like that somehow. Here we are, then we are getting close, we are getting positive, and here we will make the transition to zero again. Mm, some, something like this will probably look like. So from minus 90 to zero, here we have zero, here we have plus 90, and so on. Yeah? 
here we do have certain bands, yeah? particular band frequencies. This one I call 1 divided by TA, yeah? and this one here I call 1 divided by TB. Okay. Taking into account that we have here a band, we have here a band, and both bands are in positive direction, uh, because the steepness is getting less, uh, and here it's even turning, turning the sign, uh, and one in negative direction. We could also write uh, the transfer function of a BAD controller with, uh, you know, it's then the it's the factor representation. So we can write fr BAD from S equals, and now if something is bending up, yeah, we will have it up. <laughs> okay, so. Here we have 1 plus STA, yeah. a second one is bending up, multiplied by 1 plus STB. Yeah. In the beginning we have, we have this uh, derivation, uh, this integration part, STO, yeah. this is anyway there, and then we have here this band, and now it's in the denominator yeah, because it's bending down, so it's down. Yeah, this, this is a rule you can you can follow. And everywhere we have this typical band, yeah, those up up and down bands. Yeah, it's always this term. It's always this term, 1 plus s and then the time constant, and the reverse of the time constant is then the band frequency. Yeah? If we're bending up, this is up, if we're bending down, like here, this is down, and the fraction. Yeah? And if we now would calculate, we can even calculate these band frequencies. Yeah? These ones, yeah. let's switch back to here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's simply yeah. let's simply try it. Okay. So we said the representation, it's the parallel representation and the factor representation is looking different. So the factor representation was looking like this. Fr PAD from S equals 1 plus STA, 1 plus STB divided by STO, 1 plus ST1. Okay, so let's simply factor this or, or co combine this. So it's 1 plus STA plus STB plus S squared TADB and below we will stay with this. So above we have a polynome which is saying 1 plus S TA plus TB plus S squared TA multiplied by TP. This is exactly what is of this of this variant. Yeah? Now let's have a look what is the result of the other variant. Let's look at this. Yeah? So actually we will write FR PID from S equals KP multiplied, and now I will bring this to one, yeah, to the same value simply. 
Yeah. So here I write STN multiplied by one plus ST1. Yeah. Plus and now here I only need one plus ST1 and here I only need STN. Yeah. And this whole stuff divided by exactly STN. 1 plus ST1. Yeah. This part is 1. Yeah. This part is 1 divided by STN. Yeah. And this part is, is oh, there is of course then missing STV. Yeah. This part is STV divided by 1 plus ST1. Okay. Okay, so let's calculate this. This is Kp multiplied and now we have here, bring this in, Stn plus S squared T1 Tn plus 1 plus St1 plus S squared Tn Tv divided by Stn 1 plus st1 yeah. and now there is something interesting happening because if I now would multiply in kp then it's exactly that yeah so it's not tn it's t0 and then I've got rid of of kp yeah and here above I can write 1 plus and now let's find all the s's s multiplied by uh, t1 plus tn T1, Tn, yeah, plus S squared, and now what is left here? T1, Tn, Tv, Tn, I will also get out Tn, yeah, multiplied by uh, uh, T1 plus Tv. Is this? And now below I have, instead of Tn, I have Do, because I bring in Kp, TO 1 plus ST1. And now I can compare. Uh, comparing this, TA. Uh, so I will compare this. This is the S. Uh, so I have, this is this. Uh, I have the fact that TA plus TB equals T1 plus TN. Because actually those two things need to be the same, right? And here at S squared TA multiplied by TB must be this. Okay? So TA multiplied by TB must be TN multiplied by T1 plus TV. Okay. Now I have two formulas with two unknowns, so I can easily calculate out of T1 and TV, out of these parameters, how I can adjust it, I can calculate the frequencies where we would bend. Okay. BID controller. Okay. A lot of BID controllers are operating as PI controllers because BRT controllers are standard and usually this a lot of times this TV or DD or whatever you can adjust the derivation part is simply turned off because I said a PI controller is often enough. However, if it comes then to terms where we would need this additional D for stabilizing reason, we can turn it on. Yeah. So this is the BID controller with all those parameters and I can really adjust how this looks like in, in, in the Bode plot. This is the standard controller which is usually sold. Okay. So next time we are going to talk about a pretty nasty behavior yeah, coming from the eye part. Uh, next time we are going to talk about so-called 
wind up. What a wind up is and how we can deal with it. This will then be covered in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.